Hey, happy Easter, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Before we get started, I want to let you know about our sermon resource guide. You can find it in the description of our YouTube page or our Facebook page or on the notes section of Church Online. So please take a moment, download the sermon resource guide. We're about to get started with our Easter service. So I want you to sit back, join us for worship. It's going to be a great service. Come on, clap your hands. We're celebrating a risen king. Righteousness, his body was broken for our transgressions. But I'm so glad that's not where the story is. The lamb that was slain that day, he rose in victory. Yeah. And since then.
Did see as a lion. 
for a moment. Lord, amongst all the celebration, amongst all the praise, let us not forget that we have to cling to you, Jesus. Jesus. 
Just take a moment to take inventory of your heart. Lay it all before him. Whatever expectations you came with, whatever you wanted, whatever it is that you're going through, lay it before him right now. Father, we cling to you. We cling to your son and the sacrifice that he made as John said that he did the work so that we can stand today. and celebrate the grace and the mercy of our Lord and our Savior. That the tomb was empty. That the angel came and said, what are you doing looking for him? Go and tell what you see here. Christ has risen. With your own mouth. Worship him.
resurrection shout to God. Father, thank you for your presence and your power and your spirit that is present with us right now. Lord, wherever we are, that you are here among us. Lord, and we give ourselves over to you. And we say, God, allow your spirit to come, Father. Flood, God, this place, our homes, God, like a mighty rushing wind, Father. Lord, that your spirit, Lord, would fill us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people say, amen, amen, amen. So for those of you that do not know me, my name is Justin and I am the pastor at Zion and I am so happy to welcome you today to our Easter celebration. Are we excited to celebrate Easter together? <laughs> Hallelujah. I may get a little extra Pentecostal today. I'm in uh, with people. It's been a while in my Pentecostal home church preaching right now. So uh, be warned, you are warned. I'm gonna read from Mark chapter 16, which is one of the resurrection accounts in verses one to eight. And then we'll get into what we're going to be speaking today about. But if you have your phone, if you have your Bible, wherever you are, you can open up right now to Mark chapter 16. We'll be reading from verses one to eight. It says here, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large meaning nobody can just roll that on their own. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen, he is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples, and Peter, that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is actually the grand finale of the gospel. This is the very last part of Mark. This is the last part of all of the Gospels. We often celebrate, I believe, the resurrection without realizing what the resurrection has made possible. A lot of times we celebrate the resurrection as a standalone event, as something that is by itself, and, and by itself it is an amazing thing, but the resurrection is the capstone you know, when you, when you go to school, if you've been to college, the last class of your major, they make you, it's the capstone of your major. It brings everything together that you have learned over the last four years, five years, whatever it is. I mean, when I was in school, some of it was like the last nine years you've been in college, you know, whatever it is. That last, that last class brings together all of it. And what that is, is it's, it's kind of the, the finishing touch of your major. The resurrection was the finishing touch of the gospel, the, the very capstone of what Jesus had been going around and preaching and saying. 
But many times when we share the gospel, we only share the last three days. The resurrection, the death, the burial. But really, this was the finishing act. The reason why it is so important is because in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul says, without the resurrection, our faith is for nothing. So everything that Jesus had done over the last 30, 33 years of his life would have been for nothing without the resurrection, without this finishing touch, without this capstone would have all been for nothing. And that is why it is such an amazing celebration. But we can't forget that it is not the full picture. That's kind of what I want to do today is give us the beginning and the end. Today is so special because it means so much more than that Jesus is alive. That's a powerful thing for someone to conquer death. But what that act did in history for everything that happened previous to it and everything that happens and will happen after it is the beauty of what the resurrection has done. See, when Jesus came on the scene, do you realize that Jesus was preaching the gospel? That it says that he would walk around preaching the gospel. Sometimes it was the kingdom of heaven, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Sometimes it was the gospel of the kingdom or the kingdom of God. But Jesus was preaching the gospel from the very beginning. In fact, we see in Mark chapter one, the very first chapter, the beginning of the book that we just read the last chapter of, chapter 16, he says this. Now, after John was arrested, John the Baptist, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. From the very beginning, Jesus was proclaiming the good news of God. If the gospel summed up, summed up is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, how could he be proclaiming the gospel before any of that ever happened? Well, what was he doing when he proclaimed, listen to what Jesus said after it says that he proclaimed the good news of God? He said, the time is fulfilled, verse 15, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel or the good news. See, what I want to share with you today is the full picture, the whole gospel all of the good news of Jesus. That when he went in the very beginning, he said this, that he was sharing the good news of God or the good news of the kingdom of God. See, the good news is that the kingdom of God is at hand, has come. When Jesus in another gospel walked into the synagogue, he stepped up before everybody and he opened the scroll of Isaiah And he said, the blind are going to see, the captive is going to be set free. The demonic is going to have to leave. He proclaimed what it meant for the kingdom of God to come. So the good news that we celebrate today is that God's kingdom is here, is among us in fact, is, is living in you and in me, that wherever we go, we are going with the kingdom, with us, that every person that comes to Jesus is another person that takes ground for the kingdom of God here on earth, that when Jesus prayed the prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, your kingdom come, it was people like you and me submitting to God, and walking out what Jesus did. And so the resurrection adds the final piece to this good news. 
But the first two pieces that Jesus gives, I believe God put on my heart to share today before we get to the peace that we do. What do we do with the resurrection? How does this add to the gospel? Jesus first tells people to do two things when he meets them and he shares the gospel, the good news of the kingdom. When the kingdom meets you as it is meeting you right now, Jesus tells the people, the kingdom is at hand, it has come, it is here. There are two things that you are supposed to do. He says, the first thing is to repent. Repenting is this. It is to acknowledge the failure of all your past idolatry. Of all the things that you worshipped in the past to leave them all behind for the sake of Christ, to turn your mind away, to turn around, and to no longer go in the way that you had gone before. The first thing that Jesus calls us to do is to repent. This acknowledgement of all the things that we've walked by are failures. You know, yesterday I was looking at the, uh, this new music video that Demi Lovato put up. And I was struck by it. It's called Dancing with the Devil. And on one end, last week, we had one artist who is literally in his video dancing with the devil. And then you have this artist who posts this video on Friday called Dancing with the Devil. And so I, I clicked on it do we have another one that's blatantly dancing with the enemy or what's happening here? And then what I watched unfold before me was the story as a pastor that I see all too often. You know, a lot of people, they come to me and they, they wanna share their deepest, darkest secrets with me and they're, they're scared of how I will react because they see me as a holy man, as somebody who has no, nothing to do with sin. It's, it's the, the misunderstanding of how we view God a lot of times is, is put on how we view pastors. And the misunderstanding we have towards God is if I come into his building, he's going to kill me for my sin. I'll be struck down by lightning. I'll burst into flames. I've, you know, I've heard it all. People serious or joking around. But the misunderstanding is no, God, he came for the sinner. In fact, this is where you belong. And so when I, when I speak with people, they're usually scared to tell me what's going on in their heart and in their life. But what they don't realize is as a pastor, almost nothing will shock me. I've heard it all. And when I say I heard it all, it's because I've, I've heard things that would be unspeakable or unimaginable for most people to hear that others have done and partook in. And what I saw in this video was somebody, what, what Demi Lovato was singing and, and had put in video, is what I see all too often. Is that the trap of this world, a lot of times, is so enticing. Paul says in Corinthians that when the enemy comes, he comes Satan comes as an angel of light. He doesn't come like, do you know I'm about to destroy your life? That's not how sin enters in. It comes as enticing. It comes as comfort. It comes as, as, as fun, as exciting, as I want to live free. But in the process, it binds us. It chains us. And we realize a lot of times when it's too late that we have been bound by something that we cannot break free of. And this video that... Demi put up there, we're on a first name basis. <laughs> and I text her after and I was just like, powerful. But this video that Demi put up there was this, the reality that I see as a pastor happen every day with people that come to me that are at the end of their rope. They have realized the chains that they have bound themselves with in sin. And they are looking for an answer. And if you watch that video, I actually encourage you to watch it. I know your pastor is telling you to type dancing with the devil on YouTube. That's not something that you thought would happen on Easter Sunday. <laughs> but when you have all the wealth, 
when you have all the fame, when you can have everything at your fingertips, and I've met many people that have, the dark places that you go to, and that is her story, the things that have happened to her with all of that. And is the story of so many of us here that we come bound looking for an answer. What can set me free? Well, when Jesus comes on the scene, he says the good news of the kingdom is here. I have come to set the captives free. This prophecy is fulfilled in your midst. The first thing that he calls for people to do is to repent. Repentance is the acknowledgement of the things that have bound me, the things that have brought me to the place that I am, whether it be the, the visual things, the obvious things like drugs and alcohol, or whether it is the unobvious things like my pride and my self-strength and will. I have tried it all, and when I repent, I turn away from those things, and I look at Jesus, and my mind shifts and says, those things are no longer the answer. The alcohol, the weed, the relationships, the boyfriends, the girlfriends, the Instagram likes, the, the comfort, and all the things that I've looked, those will not save me. In fact, they will only continue to bind me. Jesus says the first thing that you need to do is repent. Turn away. Mark your life. Repentance says, I have a BC and an AD. I have a before Christ now, and I have an after death when I have died with Jesus. The next thing that he calls the believer to do is this He says, Repent and believe. Belief as we see it explained in the actions of the disciples and in the New Testament, was to put your hope in the new kingdom and its everlasting king. Belief was at that time when Jesus was speaking was to say, you are the Messiah, you are the king. Yes, I believe the kingdom of God is present and here among me. Belief today is to look at Jesus and to say, I believe, Jesus, that your kingdom is present and that you are now my king. You are my Lord and you are my Savior. I will not follow anyone or anything. I will follow you and you alone. Belief only comes after the act of repentance when we turn away from our past and then we put our hope in Jesus for our future. Belief was not just having some intellectual experience with knowledge and saying, yeah, I believe historically Jesus came. Belief is forsaking all that you have behind you. And all that you have before you. And saying, the only thing that I will cling on to is Jesus. You believe that the king who rules is here among us right now. The anointed one who earth was waiting for had come. You believe that the kingdom of the Christ was established and we are living in his everlasting kingdom now and that his kingdom has been inaugurated and will eventually set all things right on the day of judgment. This is not a passive observance that changes just the course of your Sunday mornings. It is the deeply held conviction that has changed the course of your life. The course of your Mondays and your Tuesdays and your Wednesdays and your Thursdays and your Fridays and your Saturdays, as well as your Sundays. That is the belief that Jesus was calling to. 
But then after the resurrection, something happens, something different, something is also called upon to. It starts off with Mary in the tomb, in the empty tomb. What does the angel tell Mary to do? He says, go and tell the disciples. In Acts 1, before Jesus ascends into the throne room of God the Father, what does he say? He says, you will be my witnesses. Tell the world of the king who sets the captives free. Don't hold it in. He came and inaugurated the kingdom. He opened the blind eyes. He broke the chains of the oppressed. He cast out all the demonic rulers He died as the ultimate sacrifice. And then he rose to put an end to death itself. Go and share the news. See, the capstone is that this is not something just for us individually to do, but it is something for us to invite our neighbors and our family and all into. To be like Mary who witnessed the resurrection power of Jesus. And you may say, Justin, I was not in that tomb. I was not there to witness the power of Christ. I was not there to witness the empty tomb. I I didn't go. The angel didn't speak to me. But then I would say and I would ask, what has Christ done in you? If you are not at a place where you feel like you have witnessed the resurrection power of Jesus, if you are not at a place where you have witnessed the king take lordship over your heart where now you feel as if Paul said, I used to be a slave to sin and now I am a slave to righteousness. Where your life is enveloped and encompassed by God, I must serve you. If you have not experienced the freedom that the king offers in his kingdom, then I would say, come back with me a step. The first thing is we need to repent and to believe. Because I can tell you, I have witnessed the resurrection power of Jesus. I may have not been standing there at that empty tomb that day, but I have witnessed the power of God. I have witnessed his power in my heart. I have witnessed his power in my family. I have witnessed his power in my friends to such a degree that no one can tell me that he did not rise then what is it that broke the chains of my heart? What is it that freed me from my oppression that has opened my eyes to the world around me to see it for what it is, to see the battle raging not only in me but in the world? What is it that has brought me new life? That is what we are called to witness to to testify about. The resurrection was the final act and gave us our final command from Jesus. Go and tell. But I believe today that there are many of us that first need to repent and believe. If you have been struggling with the intellectual anomaly of what it means for a person to rise from the dead, for God to be around today, and you have struggled with your life and the things around you. And you have struggled with the unbelief that that has brought. And I make the same invitation that Jesus made at the very beginning of his ministry. 
proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom is at hand. Repent and believe. Because unless you first repent and then put your hope in him, you will never experience the power of that empty grave. And when you experience the power of that empty grave, then you'll have no chance but then to tell other people about it. Because it is something so great, so powerful. I still remember the time in my life where from my own personal life, I experienced Jesus' power in my heart. I tell people that know me now, you would not recognize B.C. Justin. And I don't mean just like you wouldn't recognize how I acted, but I mean like you just, you wouldn't even recognize me physically, I think. I was a different person. And when I experienced God walking into my heart and breaking the chains of the enemy, something that I could never do, that I had cried out, that I had used all my willpower for, that I had run to everything that I would thought would make me happy and everything that I thought would encourage me and everything that I thought would make it better and they failed me. And not only did they fail me, but they bound me more and more and over and over and over again. But when I experienced the resurrection of Jesus and all those chains came off, As Paul said it, the old man passed away and the new man was created. And I remember seeing some of my old friends after some time and them commenting and their family commenting. You know, when you go to somebody's house, you're friends with the whole family and they're just like, Justin, who are you? I didn't even say anything yet. I'll never forget some of these things over and over again. You look totally different. You look like a new person. This is unbelievers telling me this. And then they would ask me that fateful question, what happened? Church, the good news calls us to repent. Everything that you did will be forgiven. God simply asked you to walk away from it, to turn your mind from it, to turn your eyes from gazing upon those things to gazing upon him. To believe, to put all of our hope in life and death in him. That as Job said, no matter what may slay me, even if you slay me, Lord, still I will hope in you. And then third, to witness to tell everyone else about it. I've seen over and over again the process of people repenting, believing, witnessing. It's something I will never get tired of. It's the reason why I do what I do. But let me tell you, there are many here that don't want to Repent, you may be scared. Like I said before, I just feel like many of us are worried that we've gone too far. That we're worried about how God would react or our pastor would react or the leader would react when we confess and when we repent of our sins, when we turn away. But I tell you today, God is not blind to our sin and yet he still died on that cross so that we would be saved in a moment like this where we do not have to wonder another day if we will be accepted by God, but we can confidently walk today and say, God forgives me. He blesses me. And he calls me his own. But church, I don't want you to leave today without hearing the call of the good news 
of the kingdom. That the oppressor no longer has power. And that all of us today can witness and experience the resurrection power of Jesus to regenerate, renew, and transform our hearts and our minds. Jesus asked for one thing, very simple, repent and believe. And so I call today, if you have sensed the oppression of the enemy and you say, I want to repent. I've danced with sin too long. But I turn away today. And I invite you at any moment during worship, you can come up and receive prayer that the Spirit of God would invade our hearts during worship and that as we call out to Jesus to turn from our ways and to believe and hope in the Son of God that his kingdom would come into our hearts right now and transform the course of our life to come where death no longer becomes death, but it only becomes a moment of sleeping until we resurrect again with him in the new heavens and the new earth. With the spirit of God here right now as our guarantee of things to come. For those watching, I invite you right now to get before God and pray on your knees if you have to and to invite him to change your heart, your mind and your life and to say finally once and for all, God, I believe that this would not just change my Sunday morning, but it would change the course of my life and to invite the resurrection power of Jesus into your heart to transform forevermore. Pray with me. I thank you, God, that the gospel is not eloquent words. It is the power unto salvation. That all I have to do is proclaim it with my words. And it does the work on its own. And so, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are here right now, that you are evident now. And so many of us have felt lost this last year, that we have drifted to a place far beyond repair. But you say, I am the great healer, the great physician, the great repairer of hearts. We have not drifted too far from your gaze and from your grasp. For you are on every mountaintop as high as we can go and on every valley as low as we can bear. You are there. And we recognize that right now. And we praise you for it. And we give ourselves over to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Next announcement that we announce all the time, the app is essential. That's how you know what's going on. So make sure you download the app, zion.nyc forward slash join, and just follow the prompts and you get the app on your phone and then you know what's going on. You know the events that we're doing, the outings, who's giving away what. Joseph was giving away a ton of stuff um, this week on the app. I wish I would have looked sooner. I would have had some free stuff. So. Just want to let you know to get on the app. Last announcement is giving. Now, we're not taking a collection here today. We don't have a box or anything. So if you want to give, first, you can go to the website, zion.nyc forward slash donate, and you can give online, or you can take out your phone right now. You can text the amount to 84321. You follow the prompts there, and you're giving right away. Love you guys. Happy Easter. Thank you for coming today.